All right, welcome once again hey, to the Prima Dons. Here we are, once again, in MTN Studios, the house the Prima Dons built. And oh, the stars are out tonight, as promised. We told you last week. Sure enough, he's back again this week. The world's heavyweight champion, Mick Bockwinkle. <laughs> hand from our studio audience. And might I point out that for 15 years, this gentleman. 15 straight years, he was either the singles or tag team champion. Now, you know what my, my, my former manager would say to that? What would he He'd say? say, can a compliment, I'll take cash. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of your former manager, last week uh, you brought us right up to the AWA uh, days and we were uh, just discussing uh, you getting together with Ray Stevens and Bobby Heenan and I know for Prima Don's fans who are uh, longtime wrestling fans, of course, those are two names that... Uh, that is going to make bring a smile to yeah. to most people's faces. Tell us oh, about yeah. those guys. Ray, Ray Stevens, God love him. He was uh, an over exuberant child in a, in a man's profession, and Ray never had a bit of animosity in his body. And if somebody came into a bar and punched him and knocked him off the off the the, the, the bar stool, before he would just jump up and, and kill the guy. He go well. What would you do that for? <laughs> now, if you had, if you had a good answer, he he say that makes sense. But if you were a wise a or a jerk or whatever, and he sensed that, then the poor guy was just mush meat. <laughs> I mean, he'd just, he'd just be done with. But and that's what made him a great wrestler. He he never. I mean, he would get mad. But at the same time, he was always just, he loved it. I mean, I've said this to many people before. Ray was a better wrestler than I was. I he find was, that one hard, no, to, no, hard no. to believe. And that's, he had ability-wise. But he had a, a kind of a mental attitude. And, and what makes somebody successful, I think, is a combination of a number of factors. And Ray was, God, he loved life. He just enjoyed it. He had every toy in the world. When we lived up here, he had snowmobiles and speedboats and no matter where, <laughs> motorcycles and you name it. They all had to be the fastest. And uh, he, was, he was truly uh, a teenage kid uh, with a grown man's finances to buy the toys. <laughs> and uh, I, if I, I, when I first met him, if I just followed him, he'd buy something and pay $20,000 for it. And six months later, he said, well, I don't want that. And he'd sell it for 10. You could, have, you could have followed him and just bought all the toys he'd get rid of and still make yourself a good living. You know? <laughs> but, but, but a fun person and just a great partner, easy to get along with, you know. How, how many years did you tag? Oh, gosh, Ray I Stevens? guess we, we, we on, tagged probably. probably a good five, six years yeah. at least. So you know, and section he was, of your career was special. yes, and he was a great partner. He was he was so easy to wrestle with. He was he was a natural in the ring. Uh, he would do things without thinking, and uh, so that even though I had the singles championship and he didn't, had he ever decided to concentrate to the degree that I did, then I would not have been able to beat him. That's why I mean when I say he was better. But yet, because I decided to concentrate and and, and had that aim and and really worked at it, that made the difference. And uh, because Ray's mental state of mind. So, you know, when you talk about somebody being successful, it's just not physical talent and ability. It's also a mental attitude that goes along with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and but, but Ray, God bless him, he was just, just fabulous. Just great. Oh, he was. And how about Bobby the Brain? What? Bobby One the Brain. Favorites. Bobby the Brain is the fastest mind on the earth that I know today. Um, there are comedians, there are people who are very witty and very sharp, uh, and, and you want to play the zinger game with Bobby Heenan, <laughs> forget it, man, you're, you're mincemeat. Uh, and the reason being is that he doesn't just have a lot of uh, memorized quips and, and remarks like a lot of comedians do, like Don Rickles or somebody. You say something to Bobby, Bobby will zing you back, and he tailor makes it for you. <laughs> and the remark, as it's said, Anybody around you will know it's you. Whether it's the T-shirt, the hair, the beard, the glasses, he, he incorporates it <laughs> that quick, and it's you. And uh, he could probably, if he had 10 people, and they all took a shot, you know, he could just sit there and ba-boom, ba-boom. <laughs> he just he'd go back and forth on that line all night long. He just, just extremely well, fast. Oh, no, no, the wittiest, <laughs> wittiest, sharpest brain. 
not always necessarily in the uh, GP version, <laughs> but I mean, you know, people think, you know, the, the people who watch him, they hear him today, and I'll say, that's GP. Yeah. He says, you've never dealt or uh, gone into his R, our X version, <laughs> which he has that too, and I and I've seen that in action. Oh, it's brutal, brutal. I mean, you don't. I mean, nobody. Don't don't even think of it, folks. If you're ever thinking of doing it, don't. I mean, because I mean, he'll make he'll make you this small, in front of whoever is there, and you can't get back up. <laughs> Not a guy to get in a battle of wits with. No, not at all. Not <laughs> at all. And just and and that and that that mind that was that fast was also what made him a great manager. He could see something, and and what happens is, he would just yell a couple of words, and uh, and instinctively, as fast as I was moving, say across the ring, boom, boom. I wouldn't I wouldn't stop and discuss it with him. Nothing. I knew if he saw it and he he said it, go. You know, and that's and that's. I mean, uh, he'd probably been a great football coach. Mm -hmm. You know, loved baseball, loved it. And uh, one time, this was. I'm not a big sports fan, and this is about a week before the World Series. And I says, "Who's playing in the World Series?" And this is when the Berlin Wall was still up. And he says, "The World Series is a week away, and you don't know who's playing in the World Series." He's you got to be a card-carrying communist. <laughs> you know, who wouldn't know, you know? But uh, so he didn't spare his mercy just because. Oh, he oh, oh, no, 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 no. In not fact, an issue I mean, oh no, not at all, not at all. <laughs> and I and I feel 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 bad. He's got a gorgeous, gorgeous 19-year-old daughter who's going to college down south. And I says, Bob, I says, Bobby, I says, she she'll only marry a guy that's probably going to be in his 30s. I said, she, there's not a, there's not a student in her age group that can handle her, because she's as witty as he is, oh, right. All right. and gorgeous. I mean, you, it's going to have to be a guy who's already gone through some part of life and has got confidence, and can handle the package, because she's got to be a dynamite package. And I mean, I know I'm a, I'm a, I'm a godfather, so I know, you know. And <laughs> uh, and I mean, and she's just she's like this. Oh boy. oh boy! So there is some yeah. genetics involved. Oh, in this absolutely! Yeah. Well, I knew his mother, and his mother was the same way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so.